weathering. Exposed rocks are affected by the climate. As a result, they break and are powdered. This means the grains in the rock get disintegrated. Due to parts of rock getting dissolved in water or due to the moisture in the air, chemical reactions take place. This leads to the weakening of rocks and over a period of time, they get decomposed and break. This disintegration and decomposition of rocks is called weathering. Weathering also depends on the properties of rocks. The intensity of weathering depends on the cohesiveness of the rock, that is, strength of a rock. Its porosity, that is, density, the joints present in the rocks, etc. The climate of a region also influences the process of weathering to a great extent. Mechanical weathering and chemical weathering is the two main types of the weathering process. Mechanical weathering mainly leads to the disintegration of rock, that is, to separate into pieces, whereas chemical weathering causes decomposition of rocks, that is, destruction of minerals in rocks. Mechanical weathering Due to the rising temperature during the day, minerals in the rock expand and as the temperature falls during the night, they contract. As this process goes on continuously, stresses develop in the rock mass. The grains are separated and the rocks break away. In the hot deserts, temperatures within a day vary to a great extent. At times, this process is so intense that explosions occur as rocks break. Rainwater seeps along the cracks in rocks. In regions where the temperature drops below zero degrees Celsius for a period of time, the water that has percolated, which means filtered gradually through a porous surface in the rocks, gets converted into ice. Ice requires greater space than water. Stresses develop in the rock mass as the ice tries to acquire greater space. This results in the disintegration of rocks. In many rocks, the combined action of temperature, water seeping into the rocks, and the moisture in the air leads to variations in the contraction and expansion of different layers. This results into the formation of the sheets that fall away from the outer layer of the rock. This type of weathering is called exfoliation. Chemical weathering Decomposition of constituent minerals in a rock is called as chemical weathering. These chemical reactions take place through the medium of water. Therefore, chemical weathering is faster in areas of high rainfall. Compared to this, the chemical weathering is very low in the areas of hot and dry climate 
as well as in permafrost regions. Chemical weathering depends also on the properties of rock. Rocks change as some minerals in them react chemically with water. In other words, the rock gets decomposed and consequently its properties also change. For example, the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere dissolves in rainwater and this leads to the formation of mild carbonic acid. In carbonic acid, salts like calcium carbonate in limestone get dissolved very easily and the limestone gets decomposed. The water or moisture in the air reacts with ferrous minerals in rocks. Their rusting leads to decomposition of rocks. Biological weathering Roots of trees grow in the cracks of rocks. This creates stresses in the rock mass and the cracks widen. Different animals and insects dig the land to make holes, ant hills, etc. Human activity is also responsible for the weathering process. While constructing transport routes, digging wells, or extracting minerals from mines, explosives are used. This too leads to the weathering of rocks. The weathering caused by human beings, animals, and plants is called biological weathering. Soils and Soil Types The uppermost layer of the Earth's surface that is produced through the process of weathering and contains some biotic material is called soil. Soil is one of the important natural resources. It is a medium necessary for plant growth. Soils differ from region to region according to the minerals and organic matter that they contain. The thickness of soil, its fertility, ability to drain water is some of the important properties of soil. The growth of plants in a given soil depends on these properties. Soils and soil Factors influencing formation of soil. Climate. Nature of rock. The extent of natural vegetation. Organic matter. Slope of the land. And the period of formation are the factors that influence the formation of soils. The types of soil depend on these factors. If you observe a soil section from the ground surface to the hard rock at a depth, you will find different layers. These layers are called soil horizons. The top layer contains utter and roots of plants. In the layer below it, you will find partially 
a totally decomposed organic material. The next layer contains small pieces of rock. The lowest layer is that of unweathered rock. A soil with well-developed horizons is called a mature soil. An enormous period of time is required for the formation of such a soil. The material accumulating at the base of mountains constantly gets washed off. Hence, sufficient time is not available for the formation of soils. Similarly, in river plains, new alluvium is constantly being added. In this condition also, the time necessary for the formation of soils does not become available. As a result, different horizons do not develop in the soil. Such soils are called young soils or immature soils. Types of soils Based on their properties and processes of formation, Three types of soils are identified. 1. Zonal soils Climate plays a dominant role in the formation of this type of soil. Even when there is a variety in the types of rock in a region, the type of soil that is developed is uniform. The regions of zonal soil generally are parallel to the latitudes. Even though there are a variety of rocks in most of the frigid zone, you will find the tundra type of soil in the entire zone. In the frigid zone, where rainfall is low, you will find the tundra type of soil. In the temperate zone, where rainfall is sufficient throughout the year, the podzol, grey-brown or forest-brown soil type is found. Where there is seasonal rainfall, the chernozem and the pereri soil type is found. In the temperate zone, where the rainfall is low or very low, we find the chestnut and the cold desert soil type. In the tropical zone, where there is plenty of rainfall throughout the year, we find tropical, red and laterite soil type. In the tropical zone, where there is seasonal or very low rainfall, we find rigor and red desert soil type. Two, intrazonal soils. In the drier regions, typical soils are developed depending on the types of rocks. The soils developed on the basalt rock in Maharashtra, or the red soils developed on the granite and nice rocks in South India, are examples of intrazonal soils. The soils from which water is not easily drained become saturated. In waterlogged regions, peat soils are developed out of vegetal materials. Soils in Kashmir Valley and Uttar Mandalam are examples of this type. Intrazonal soils are developed at local levels, hence their extent is limited. Therefore, the distribution is not generally shown on a world map. Azonal Soils These soils are formed in mountainous regions out of the fine grains produced by weathering. However, due to various reasons, this fine-grained material constantly slides down the slope. As a result, 
the time necessary for the formation of soils does not become available. Therefore, these soils remain immature. For example, soils along the slopes of the Himalayan mountains. In river plains, particularly in flood plain areas, new alluvium gets deposited every year. The time for soil formation remains inadequate. Hence, flood plain soils also remain immature. In the river plains, due to alluvium, an availability of water, the farmlands are fertile but the soils remain immature. The figure shows mountain soils. Find the major mountain systems with which these soils are associated.